Well, to God be the glory. Let God's name be praised. Let the people say amen. Let's talk to the Lord. Dear God, we thank and praise you for this day we have never seen before, and yet it is a day that you have made, and we are glad in it. We are blessed, God, to be able to worship together, even in this configuration, knowing that you're in the midst and you are wherever your believers are. So God, as we go to your word, we pray that there is out of this word that which is inspiring and strengthening to us that the Holy Spirit lifts up and makes possible. Use me, I pray, once again, as a servant. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So you heard read the passage of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Allow me, if you will, just to read a few verses of that again for focus, beginning at verse number 4 through verse number 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. On this morning's message is entitled, The Extended Mind. The Extended Mind mind. There's an aircraft carrier called the USS Palau. It was speeding towards San Diego Harbor with its engines failed. They needed quick action to avert disaster, but no one person had the key to stopping the runaway ship. Fortunately, the captain, the navigator, the quartermaster chief, and navigation team pooled their brawn and their brains, and they came up with a makeshift repair solution, and they were able to save the day using their extended mind. No one single brain prevented the tragedy, but the many came together and did so. So for years, you know, we have honored the geniuses to who appear to achieve great things on their own, whether they're working in science, the arts, business, technology, human rights, civil rights. But this idea of the lone genius is actually a myth. The most successful minds in history have made their breakthroughs with the help of others. Michelangelo worked with a team of assistants to paint the Sistine Chapel. Albert Einstein analyzed the work of others at the Swiss Patent Office as he developed his own theories. And since this is Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday, and a Sunday in which we celebrate the beloved community, We've got to remember that although Dr. King was a great scholar and orator who inspired the nation, the movement for the civil rights required a whole host of persons who made it work. And the Apostle Paul, well, he lived in Corinth with a couple named Aquila and Priscilla, and they worked together as tent makers. And you can imagine the conversations they might have had over their sewing as Paul was preparing to argue in the synagogue to try to convince people that they ought to be following Jesus. So there's a science writer named Annie Murphy Paul. She's written a book called The Extended Mind, The Power of Thinking Outside the Brain. And in the book, she challenges us to tap the intelligence that exists beyond our brains, in our bodies, in our surroundings, and in our relationships. Our thinking, which is often referred to as cognition, is improved by connections that are all around us. The author 
argues that walking or exercising together can lead us to behave more cooperatively and be more successful in achieving shared goals. Morning calisthenics routines are broadcast over Japanese radio and they're followed by people who are Sony corporate executives and Japanese school children. And together, these groups of people are sharing in exercises that create a greater sense of synergy and cohesion among the members of the group. There's even value in sharing a meal, according to Annie Murphy Paul, with the effect being even heightened if the food is spicy and served family style. Not sure why that works, but sounds good to me. Our thinking is also helped by taking what is called an awe walk. Awe, A-W-E, awe walk. Get out of your home, of your office, get out of your familiar surroundings and spend some time outdoors and allow yourself to be moved by the majest majesty of nature. Find yourself in a place where you can be in awe. You see, awe can act as a reset button for the brain, shaking us loose from our old patterns and opening us up to new ways of thinking. And so reflecting on this book by Paul, psychologist Emily Bal. Cetus says that intelligence can be found in part in our brains, but perhaps more importantly in our hearts and our skin. In the architecture of the physical spaces we surround ourselves with and in the friendships we keep. Mm -hmm. um, this form of intelligence isn't found in just one person, person, but emerges as multiple minds uh, collaborate. Uh, she calls it socially distributed cognition, uh, socially distributed thinking, not one brain, but an extended mind. Uh, so obviously the Apostle Paul was not a psychologist, but he knew about the insight being found beyond the minds of single individuals. And so he says to the Corinthian church, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. I, I do not want you to be ignorant. He, he said I, I, he wants them to be fully informed about the way that the Holy Spirit is at work in their lives. The Spirit is not coming to them, it's not coming to us as individuals who are isolated, oh, but here it is, it is coming to us, He is coming to us as a community. The Holy Spirit is offering to them and to us spiritually distributed cognition. Watch that. Spiritually distributed cognition. Paul says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Ah. There's one God, according to Paul, giving a variety of gifts to a variety of people, and together these people form one body with one extended mind. And the goal is for the common good. Let me add parenthetically, I really can't understand people who are fighting the vaccination talking about is my body, is my freedom, I'm an American, and, and, and have they forgotten that a democracy operates for the common good? 
All right, I, that's enough of that. But you get the point. Because in the church, there are those people who, I'm not talking about our church, I just mean in the church, there are those people who only exist to do that which is pleasing to them, is beneficial to them. We've got to understand that even so in the body of Christ, we are gifted for the common good. That's the goal. And so whether it's the, the, the sailors who are on the USS Palau steaming towards San Diego Harbor or Japanese school children who are doing calisthenics in the morning or members of a congregation coming together for a potluck or a Bible study or worship, it's for the common good. And so to achieve this goal, the Spirit gives the utterance of wisdom to one, the utterance of knowledge to another. The Spirit gives to other people gifts of faith and gifts of healing, the working of miracles, prophecy, a discernment of spirits, various kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. All of these gifts come from the same spirit in order to advance the common good, in order to provide an act of spiritually distributed cognition. You see, within the church, we've got this same experience of different gifts working in different people. And we know that this would be far less insightful, that we would be less insightful and less effective if everybody had the same gift. But even though we have a variety of gifts, we are one Christian community. And might I add on this MLK Sunday, we are one beloved Christian community. So for just as the body is one and has many members, Paul says, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. We are one Christian body with socially and spiritually distributed cognition. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, here it is, we have an extended mind. Um, there's a church in Virginia, Fairfax Presbyterian Church, where whenever a group of young people join the church and they become members of a confirmation class, when they're completing their confirmation, they stand before the elders and deacons and trustees of the church, and they state their faith, and they present their confirmation product, projects. And together they represent different parts of the body of Christ and they show the power of socially and spiritually distributed cognition. In, in that particular church, there was a young woman named Emily who spoke about how she had been influenced by the philosophers and the theologians, including St. Thomas Aquinas. And she wrote extensively about the body of Christ in the church and said that it, I said at one point that the head and members are one mystical person. Ah, in other words, there's always going to be spiritual solidarity between Christ, the head of the church, and all of us who are members of his body. Another class member who, whose name is Faith spoke passionately about how her faith has helped her. And there's one boy named Clark who used his own hands to craft a pencil, and then he took that pencil to write his statement of faith. And then there was another one by the name of Serena who talked about her running and her faith, and, and a girl named Kristen actually used her hands and her feet to break boards, but it demonstrated how her faith had enabled her to break through a number of personal obstacles. All of these young people, here they are, representing a variety of gifts, activities, and members and parts, but they're one body, and as Thomas Aquinas would say, one mystical person, or as we might say, one extended mind. Glory to God. 
You see, we are much smarter together than we would ever be apart. We are much more effective together than we can ever be apart. And so whether it's in confirmation classes or of a young people's group or the larger church, each person is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. It doesn't matter what your passion is, if our passion is singing, if our passion is theology, is if our passion is philosophy, is if our passion is writing, if our passion is running, if it's martial arts, whatever, our gifts are here for the common good. If you could teach English classes for folks who have English as a second language, you, 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 you have something can, to contribute uh, to the common good. Seniors can mentor teenagers and married couples can reach out and help coach other couples. Children can draw pictures for the residents of nursing homes. And in each of the activities, we see the power of the Holy Spirit working for the common good. All are activated by the one and same spirit who allots to each individually just as the spirit chooses. The spirit of God is the activator, not us. We don't activate a thing, but the spirit of God is the activator. The spirit activates some to sing uh, with the priest team or the choir, and there are some that the Spirit activates to uh, offer um, a different kind of expression. Some will take trips of missionary activity. Some will meet together and lead groups in study of the Bible and lead small groups as we will be gathering together soon. Some will be engaged in Sunday school, and the Spirit activates each of the activities. And we would not be as smart or as effective apart as we can be together. Bless God. Uh, so, so, so now let's, let's abandon the myth of the lone ranger, the lone genius, and replace it with the understanding and the belief in the Christian mind. And yes, even on Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday, let's abandon this notion that there'll never be another Dr. King, because together all of us can become a part of the extended mind doing the activities for freedom and justice even in this day, uh, I know that we are indebted to great individuals. In the Bible, we have great heroes and sheroes of the faith. We've got Abraham and, and Moses and Mary Magdalene, and we've got Paul, just to name a few folks. But I also want to lift up for you that even they perhaps were not the lone geniuses. Abraham needed Lot and Sarah to travel with him in faith towards the Canaan land. Moses required his brother Aaron to speak for him when he couldn't speak for himself. Mary got to the empty tomb, but she immediately took off and ran to Simon Peter and the beloved disciple. And I write it today for today's spirit, spiritual scripture lesson, Paul, well, Paul had a whole bunch of traveling companions. He traveled with Timothy, for example. Paul wanted Timothy to join him because the young man's mother was Jewish and his father was a Greek, and he knew how to relate to both communities. Acts tells us that after Timothy joined Paul and Silas in their work, the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in numbers daily. Bless God, hallelujah, I'm talking about the extended Christian mind. We've got one spirit, one faith, and one Lord Jesus. Uh, but the gifts of God are given to us 
in a variety of forms so that we can be both smart and effective as we do God's work in the world. Somebody said teamwork uh, makes the dream work. And so my brothers and sisters, even as we celebrate this community, this notion of the extended mind, even as we celebrate the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., even as we celebrate the activities and the fight and the struggle that has led to the civil rights that we now have. Just remember, not only did Dr. King have a dream, but there are many parts of that dream still waiting to be actualized. And I've come to tell you that together we can uh, make the dream work. We're stronger together. We're smarter together. We're more effective together. We're more efficient together. We can do it together uh, better than we can attempt uh, to do it alone. Every now and then you find yourself watching football. I know this is when we begin our playoffs, and some of you have already begun watching the playoff games on yesterday, but every now and then you might see a quarterback, and we've got some quarterbacks, especially some of our African-American quarterbacks who are uh, very good at both throwing the ball and running the ball. Yeah. But the problem becomes now uh, there has to be this notion and balance of when to understand that just because I can do it, it's not always good for me to do it. Yeah, uh, I can be a quarterback who can throw the ball and run the ball. Um, but if there's a group of folks bearing down on me, uh, I do have the option of running the ball if nobody's available to throw to. Uh, uh, but I do not want to make sure, I do not want to be one who hogs the ball, uh, not giving it to somebody else. Uh, 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 you have found uh, perhaps that st statistically those who hog the ball are the ones who, who get uh, 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 you know, tackle to the ground. Uh, in other words, uh, the smart quarterback has to understand uh, I can't run the ball all the time. Sometimes I've got to throw it uh, to somebody else and they can run in uh, for the touchdown. I've come to declare that teamwork makes the dream work. Everybody, hallelujah, ought to be of this one mind, uh, empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, everybody ought to understand you've got something to contribute uh, and the Holy Spirit can use it for the common good. I, I don't need anybody sitting around saying, I didn't get anything, uh, uh, because that's not the truth. If you're a believer, uh, hallelujah, you've got something that you can contribute. Hallelujah. I just want to remind somebody on this Sunday that you've got something to contribute, and we can be successful together with our Christian extended mind. Oh, uh, bless God. Listen, I want you all, I want, if you're listening, if you're watching, and uh, you're not a part of the body of Christ, I need you in the body of Christ. I need you to, first of all, have relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. I need you to understand what that means. He died for all of our sins. And when we acknowledge and accept that is when we become a part of the body of Christ and we take part in this extended Christian mind. If you've never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, if you need to just re- fresh reunite in your relationship with the body of Christ, please indicate so by putting your name in the chat. If you need to join the church, the local body of Christ, the local church, and even though we're in Cambridge, you, you can connect with us as you see worldwide. We'd love to have you in fellowship with the church. Love to have you in fellowship with us at St. Paul. Again, the extended mind. Put your name in the chat. If you're interested in joining the body of Christ, if you're interested in joining the church, you might be watching this at a later time. And so that's why the number is also on the screen that you may text the word join to that number. Whether you're joining the body of Christ, joining St. Paul in particular, text it to the number on the screen. We'd be happy to have you to join in. I know you've got something to contribute to this Christian extended mind. Amen.